A very uh, well good morning to all of you present here. Myself, architect Rahul Roy, uh, assistant professor at Guwahati College of Architecture and Planning. And uh, today will be your, uh, your host on this webinar of GCAP Insight 1.5. And I welcome you all present here with us. We have our honorable guest speaker, architect Tanvi Savantman, assistant professor at Thaku School of Architecture and Planning, who will be speaking on the topic of building the future with an intention through green building and its practices. I will uh, like to thanks and welcome architect Abani Das sir, our managing trustee, architect Sahil Das sir, our CEO, architect Digambad Das sir, our principal, Dr. Nirmala Devi ma'am, principal at Dona International Institute of Assam. And I would also like to welcome our guest speaker, architect Tanvi Savant ma'am. It is our privilege to have you with us ma'am. And uh, so before uh, starting, I shall uh, like to give a brief introduction on our college with a short video. So I will like playing the video right now. Welcome to Guwahati College of Architecture and Planning. Guwahati College of Architecture and Planning GCAP is the first premier college in Northeast India. The Trust Dona Foundation. Dona Foundation Trust was established on 13 September 2005 by architect and managing director Sri Aboni Das, trustee and educationist Srimati Daksha Das. Not his states had no degree course for architecture and students had to travel far and wide for becoming architect and designer. Dona Foundation took it upon themselves to start a college of architecture to fulfill the dreams of these students. Sri Harbesar Das Knowledge Campus promoted by Dona Foundation. Guwahati College of Architecture and Planning is approved by Council of Architecture, COA New Delhi, Higher Technical Education Government of Assam and Indian Institute of Town Planning, ITPI New Delhi. The college follows UGC guidelines and is affiliated to Astor University. The college was inaugurated by late Torun Gogoi, former Honorable Chief Minister of Assam on 26 January 2006. GCAP offers Bachelor of Architecture, BR, 5-year degree course, Bachelor of Science in Interior Design, BSc, 3-year degree course, Master of Urban and Regional Planning, M-Plan, 2-year degree course. The college has evolved over the years and all batches of students have passed out with a 100% placement track record. The role of an architect is constantly being modified and redefined with the changing scenario in the profession. Apart from having one's own practice, there are various master degree courses such as Urban and Regional Planning, Heritage Conservation, Building Management, Housing, Interior Design, Landscape Design, etc. And after master degree, students may go for higher education like PhD postdoctorate. Architecture, also known as the mother of all arts, not only reflects the society that builds, but it also affects the way that society develops. This means we need architects, planners and designers who can respond to the different needs and values of all sections of the community. And according to the reports of UNESCO, published in Times of India, our country needs 3 lakhs of town planners by 2031. The courses are very unique and is a fusion of design, art and technology, demanding a lot of presentation, physical model making, which instill self-confidence, orientership, leadership, team building, time management. So it prepares an individual as a whole to face all challenges and develops problem solving skills. Career opportunities are limitless. To mention a few, one can become an entrepreneur, freelancer, jobs in architecture town planning firms, jobs in government departments, jobs in teaching and research and development. Our new campus is surrounded by lush greenery and its beautiful sceneries creating peaceful atmosphere for students' growth and development. The campus has been named as the Sorbetsa Das Knowledge Campus, inaugurated by Sri Harbananda Honwal, former Chief Minister of Assam and Honorable Minister of Sports, Shipping and Waterways of India. Few visuals of the campus. The main block, the interior spaces, reception, front decks, studio, lecture hall, faculty room, 
conference room, multipurpose hall, computer lab, material lab. It consists of small scale models of sanitary fittings and fixtures and other materials used in building construction. Library. College has a well equipped library consisting of a wide array of reference books, textbooks, journals, CDs relevant to architecture, urban design, interior design, urban and regional planning, and other fields. Eminent personalities are invited from all over India as visiting faculty and get lecturers from time to time, like architect Vivi Doshi, architect Milkan Chaya, architect Sonke Hoff, Shri Pradut Bordoloi, Shri Dhananjay Dek, structural engineer, new age architectural engineer, architect Dhiras Chalhotra. Principal Thakur College of Architecture, guest lectures by architect Rana Mahanta, project director at Creative House Contracting, Dubai. Apart from regular academic courses, we have Sports Week, Annual Fest, Exurbia, Jonasa, and study trips to architectural places of interest in India and abroad. First Indo Malaysian Green Building Workshop on 2016. Workshop by architect Vivek Papert. Workshop on Depot Build Geo Design. Annual Fest Exurbia At GCAP, we strive to provide constant support and foster a positive spirit for holistic development of an individual. Now showing some visuals of students' classworks. GCAP believes that every student has the potential to achieve excellence in any field they choose. Other than academic, there are some visuals. Celebrating World Environment Day, College Main Gate designed by students. Students participating in Brahmaputra Beach Carnival Fest 2020. National Service Scheme Activities. Homemade marks making by students. These are the magazines published by our college as VCAP Voice. At Donor Foundation, we strive to give birth to innovation and creativity for holistic development of an individual. The journey of GCAP continues because it's always about the journey and never about the destination. Thank you. So that's our college. Uh, now let us uh, begin with a brief introduction of our guest speaker, architect Tanvi Samant, ma'am, assistant professor at Thakur School of Architecture and Planning, uh, and University of Mumbai graduate in 2014 with Masters in Environmental Architecture from Vachana Sundar Institute of Environmental Architecture in 2017. She has been practicing since 2014 and working with corporates and architecture firms in Mumbai and had also provided her expertise with the Maharashtra government on a sustainable village tourism project for Sindhudhuk district. Being a nature lover, she is also a painter and a photographer who believes that students must be encouraged to adopt and integrate environmental sensitive design in uh, sorry environmental sensitive approach in their design uh, design process so uh, now I, I would like to request you ma'am to enlighten us on the topic of green building and its practices and i would also like to tell you all that if anyone has any uh, question regarding today's topic can ask their question in the chat box so i i would like to please uh, request uh, ma'am to like start her uh, speaking speaking se session with us, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm giving you this opportunity to uh, present the uh, webinar on uh, building future with intention uh, on green building and practices. So I start sharing my screen. Uh, let me see. I'm going to put to everyone. So today's topic on the webinar is building the future with intention, which is based on green building and its practices. So whenever we uh, we think about green building, uh, it is my personal opinion that as a human beings, we are all connected to each other with the nature and the planet across the boundaries. But by and large, we feel that, uh, I feel that we are very much disconnected to this particular place. This is why, because uh, because of our over consumption, which is not in line with our planet and the resources which are constrained by our culture. We are facing a lot of challenges uh, with, the, uh, like with climate change and environmental uh, crisis, which are very complex in nature. But again, these challenges also apply to the construction industry also, which we all are into, which we all are working for. And 
this calcitonin plant uh, continues to emit a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere and uses a lot of uh, resources. But this is also where we as an architects can make a difference, a big difference by becoming more wiser with the materials and how we use them more sensibly. So altogether, we need to gain an understanding of how everything is connected and with this help we can make right decision starting from our design stage or pre-design stage and work for more sustainable construction industry. So moving ahead now, uh, let us take a moment and look at these buildings which are displayed uh, on the current slide. And can we identify or make an assumption as to which one uh, seems to be more efficient or more greener to do just by looking at it. So everyone uh, can unmute yourself or use the chat box uh, to write down your opinion which one is more greener according to you. Or you can unmute yourself and tell me which one uh, seems to be more efficient, A or B. So let it be some interactive session over here for the students. Is, are there any uh, answers to it on the chat box? Because I can't see the chat box. B, council house. And what are the reasons if anyone can uh, tell me? Ma'am, every ma'am uh, Anupal uh, is uh, writing option A, then uh, then P D uh, then uh, P D no is writing A, and Disha has written A, ma'am. So uh, everyone has written A, ma'am. Okay. Ragini, Ragini has written uh, option C. Okay, so, okay. so mostly yeah. one one option C yeah. and I think two or three option A. Man. So majority is option A. Man. So majority of you must be thinking about A because you can see some uh, green belt of vegetation which has been seen on the facade of the building and some uh, yeah. towers which is seen on the terrace. But let me tell you here, both are highly efficient buildings, green buildings. So it is like we can't judge any of the building by looking at its appearance or any building. Uh, we can't uh, judge directly of why it is a green. It is all dependent upon the efficiency of the building and efficiency can be based on a performance. And this performance of a building can be calculated or measured. So this come, uh, with this comes uh, uh, to be uh, uh, how it can be measured or how the green building is more efficient so the performances can be measured. So when we talk about measuring the performance of the building, there are these uh, four criteria or primary indicators which we can see. Energy, water, waste and EIT. EIT is the indoor environment. So these are also sustainable development indicators as such which have a potential uh, to turn a generic uh, building into a more greener building or to turn a generic concept of a building into a sustainable. So EIQ is one of the main indicators wherein we study about the potential of a given uh, space or uh, how the occupant is feeling inside a uh, building. So it includes the air quality, the outdoor acoustical controls, it includes the temperature control, uh, thermal comfort, what uh, the occupant is going to gain uh, through uh, a specific building facade. So when we talk about EIQ, uh, as a designer, we can increase the set, uh, satisfaction of the occupants who are residing in, so that uh, it turns out to be a, a very uh, sustainable and a stable building as such. And then talking about the energy and water or waste as such, these are the primary indicators which can be measured for a green building uh, indicators. So architecture and uh, building constructions, uh, when uh, we are passing on to every stage of construction and demolition, it will be seen that water is the large, uh, water has been used at, as a large, right from the primary stage of construction of the use of, uh, usage, then to the 
inhabitants and the building sector also consumes a lot of energy in terms of uh, when the inhabitants are going to uh, set into place in the building. So there is a better need of construct, uh, conservation of all these resources which are depleting right now. And with the help of sustainable design, we can achieve the same. So with this, uh, we can take these indicators into consideration and treat them responsibly. We can make up a good design uh, which can very well capture the essence which has been written on this slide, the quote which has been uh, written on this slide. So the uh, coming up to the statistics of some of the usage, what we are facing it right now. Since we are talking about measurability, let us say some supporting uh, background of how a usage is, how electricity is been used, uh, used in our daily lives and at uh, different levels uh, of uh, typology of buildings also. So. Uh, these are some facts which are based on the energy consumption and the increase in the built-up area, which is going to be by and large uh, affect the uh, resources which are already depleted. So uh, we are already a 1.2 billion of people and counting. In coming years, almost 31% of people in India are going to migrate in the urban areas and thus the infrastructure is going to increase causing a proper increase in uh, electricity usage. Mainly in commercial sector as well as residential sector, it will be seen that almost 5 to 10 percent of increase of electricity usage uh, will be uh, seen. So energy consumption will touch up to 4 million units by 2030. And these are the facts uh, which were uh, stated by uh, some of the uh, researchers. So there is already a, short, a shortage of water and almost it will be uh, in the, a drastic increase in the shortage by uh, 2030. So these are very uh, starting facts. But the green building construction as present can be a biggest solution to this unsustainable goal. And the consumption in India, if we see just the focus on India about the green building trends, how they are anticipating a research was conducted in uh, 2016 uh, and expected uh, gains were about to, uh, by the year 2015 to 18 were calculated wherein it was anticipated that the growth would significantly outspace the global average in India, mainly in two sectors. One is the commercial buildings and second is the uh, high-rise building uh, in residential uh, sector. So in commercial also 61% growth has been seen and high-rise is 48%. So moreover, by 2018, it was expected that 60% of green projects are going to get increased. But after the pandemic has um, set in, after we faced a lot of uh, uh, lockdowns and many issues were faced in the COVID-19 scenario. So the scenario in mainly the residential building as well as the commercial buildings have been changed in the real estate sector. Mainly the uh, concerns are now at a sustainable healthy living, uh, which has taken a center stage. And in this environment, even the developers are making an effort, uh, effort to create a sustainable and affordable housing initiative. By and large, uh, many sustainable materials and products are getting available and the prices are finally dropping. So that this green concept te te uh, techniques within this uh, construction and reality sector are helping us also to deal with the national concerns like water, uh, water efficiency, energy efficiency, uh, reduction in fuel, uh, and handling some uh, consumer waste and other uh, conserving other natural resources. So indirectly, the uh, facts what, uh, which we saw in the previous slide can be dealt with a greener approach or uh, with a sustainable design approach. Uh, moving on to some uh, top drivers in India, here are some more facts which uh, talks about the green building activities which are happening in India. Uh, so India is uh, uh, seventh largest country world and it has a highest population and it is almost rapidly growing. So there, uh, this growth has resulted uh, being the largest contributor to the greenhouse gases and how this can uh, how we can tackle with this uh, particular situation is to uh, 
develop frameworks of sustainable design. So the environmental regulation which you can see uh, wherein uh, it is one of the topmost uh, triggers of the green building activities in India. The second most uh, is the lower operating costs and also healthier neighborhood initiatives have been taken wherein the place making uh, principle comes into picture and it is getting uh, more and more evolved with, according to the design and development of the cities also. Other factors which can be uh, triggered right now post pandemic also is the em uh, employment recruitment. Because of the greener approach which is India is adopting even in uh, COP26 summit, we are trying to mitigate the climate change. So uh, there is a uh, rise in sustainability uh, activities and all over there are uh, uh, recruitment and jobs being uh, uh, finalized for all the stakeholders and all the groups uh, who are involved in this sustainable architecture industry. Talking about the green market now, it is very well connected with what the uh, what statistics we have seen. Uh, India is growing exponentially and by 2022, uh, 93 million of square meter of area will be covered under green. And similarly, there is a growth in sector which uh, can be seen by registration of green buildings and having a certified green buildings under the three systems and categories which we have in India. So this uh, also caters to uh, the government agency, which have already started providing some incentives on green building uh, building projects, which are happening in India. Currently in India, there are two methods which are used, uh, mainly a traditional governing method, uh, where the command and control approach is been through the local bylaws or the NBCs or ECBC uh, uh, laws. But also in some of the cities and state, the government has started giving FRA incentives or FSI incentives, which we can call. Uh, and also later, this is coupled with the green building certification, which helps the market to grow towards the green. So all these scenarios, in fact, uh, state that the green building market is on rise, and we need to take an active participation in making uh, India more green. But then what? is our role as an architect and how much we can contribute to nurture the environment through our practices of uh, building. So these days we uh, mainly hear what is uh, like uh, green building or uh, how to go green, whether you want to admit it or not, at some point of the, of the time, we have to join this movement and follow the green. So, uh, which is why there are many people focusing on uh, green building today. But then exactly what is a green building all about? What do we need uh, to make a green? Uh, what knowledge do architects need to acquire to support this sustainable practice? Uh, also, there is one question which arises, what tools and processes can be fostered to sustainable design practices? So let us now take a closer look at what it is all about and why uh, should uh, we consider it and what are the goals of a green building? And I'm sure you will find that it is something that you should take part in. Okay, so let us take a closer look first uh, at what a green building is. Some people may think it is uh, a building which is having a less impact on the environment or on the surroundings uh, as compared to the average building, but it is not uh, truly uh, possible or truly advisable. But the ideal green building project would be that will allow to preserve most of the natural environment around the site and in the vicinity where you are going to uh, uh, build it around the project site, while still being able to produce a building that is going to solve its problems. So green building is energy efficient and it is reducing uh, reduces environmental impact. But also this practice expands and complements the classic building design concerns of economic utility, durability, and comfort. Okay, I think so there is again some error of the slide change. Okay. So 
coming up to some parameters or factors which the green building deals with is uh, quality management, human health, performance standard, and regulation. As we discussed, bylaws plays an important role, and the government is the holder and commander to give uh, some set regulations for any building technology. So the regulation related to all the cities or state levels will be there, and we have to consider and abide by the uh, those regulations. But again, the sustainable environment, the quality management in materials, uh, human health and comfort relating to the indoor environment quality, how we can satisfy those occupants who are residing in the building. And then the performance standards of all the tools and appliances or any of the systems which we are going to apply in the green building design. All these factors will come into picture when we uh, talk about green building design. The utility, uh, utility, uh, utility, durability, and comfort, all again, all together, are the designers concerned to look at. Then more facts uh, which are laid on the green building design. It is uh, sustainability of building design is uh, not just characterized by process, but it has to be maintained at certain levels uh, and at all the levels of designing to the execution and to the demolition stage. And when we talk about energy reduction, it is not, uh, it is not just a parameter, but there are many considerations to it, uh, like water efficiency, material efficiency, indoor environment quality. So these are some generic factors. But the factor we miss out is a lot of development, global impact, and homeowner education. So a lot development is nothing but it all begins with the city planners and developers at a level where wherein the communities are and cities are support uh, with support efficient labor. It is all dependent upon uh, wherein the strong water management and ecosystems are considered together and are included uh, in a in that development of the area. Also, when resources efficiency is being uh, uh, categorized, uh, categorized, materials plays an important. So, use of reclaimed and recyclable materials, advanced framing techniques needs to be taken in, uh, into consideration. Energy and water are uh, one of the primary uh, indicators, and reducing the energy and water by twenty to fifteen percent should be our target when we are. Talking about green practices. Then comes the uh, indoor air quality, which we have already discussed before. But all of these comprises and it is on the homeowner education uh, education that how well he can maintain the house system. Because if he doesn't maintain and if he doesn't have the manual to maintain in a better way, then all these four categories which we have talked about goes in both. So the durability of the home. But lastly, it depends upon the homeowner who is going to reside in a particular structure. And then comes the global impact, wherein uh, the impact of the building should not negatively affect the neighborhood, the community, and the environment. This also includes uh, being socially responsible for all the species of life. The ecosystem and ecology uh, should be taken into consideration while developing a building. So with all these factors in place, uh, one thing comes to our mind is does really green, does going green really cost us more? So this the cost factor is going to affect the developers, the tenants, and every every stakeholders as such. But according to me, it is a very misconception that going green will cost us more. Why? Because uh, when we uh, start with it, uh, when we start going green. Because green material and products are costly, but you really have to consider the type of savings you will be uh, reaping uh, at the end of uh, the life cycle of the building or the building. So you will be able to save on energy costs because uh, going green also means conserving more energy. And we should really look at the green building as more of an investment rather than uh, anything else and investment that will be saving you money and investment that will be able to save 
uh, and help the environment to save. So it is at last a win-win situation for everybody. So keeping the cost aside, there are many other benefits of working in open source. So with newer technologies uh, constantly being developed and to complement the current uh, practices also, uh, the benefits of being building ages from right from the environmental health to the social and of course the economic benefits. So coming uh, to the environmental benefits, uh, when the green buildings are measured, so measuring means uh, applying for the certification or a rating system. So it is seen that it saves almost 20 to 30 percent of energy and also 40 to 50 percent of uh, compared to conventional uh, uh, buildings in India, water is been also saved. So, in 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 turn, it will, it helps us to mitigate the climate change effect, and it reduces the uh, it reduces the impact of environment as well. So, conservation of natural resources is by and large uh, going to happen, which can also support in limiting the global uh, rise in temperature, which is uh, to be uh, which is said by uh, reducing it by two percent. So, by and large, environmental benefits are there, uh, as well as the economic benefits which we are going to see as a stakeholder. Uh, we will be able to reduce the cost and increase the value of the uh, value of the building. But also, there will be a, a higher occupancy rates which can be seen with uh, because of the because of the advantages that green buildings uh, have set. Uh, it will also create a market for green products, green uh, jobs and services also. And uh, talking about the social benefit as such, if we try to achieve a better indoor environment quality, it will lead to a greater performance and a better, uh, better health also. So uh, it was, uh, it was, a research was done wherein uh, workers in a well-ventilated office had recorded uh, a hundred percent increase in the cognitive score, that is the brain functioning score. So there are various research being conducted which are proof that the green building helps to shape the quality of life. So all these factors are very beneficial, and when we talk about uh, when we talk about the asset values. Because there will, uh, would be, even after getting the evidence of uh, the benefit the uh, green building provides, individual or individual stakeholders will have their uh, question arising that why it could be benefited for certain developer or a tenant or a owner as such to go greener. The, so the concept of green building always uh, rely on the asset values. With different, uh, which has a different meaning for various stakeholders in the property sector. So, right from the developer who is going to uh, consider the cost analysis, his sale price can increase, his, his sale can be quicker because of the marketing strategy the green building can uh, help. You. And with, uh, if we see tenant or owner, both can uh, benefit with uh, health and social uh, benefits can be seen. And there are many other benefits which can overlap with all the stakeholders. So by and large, it is a win-win uh, situation for all the stakeholders altogether. So uh, now moving ahead, uh, how can we make our building screen? When uh, as a designer, we start our designing by thinking uh, a pre-design state. We uh, look into the site analysis and we start the designing by some uh, uh, putting up uh, putting up the climate analysis as well, building up our concept, uh, concepts. And then uh, at a designing stage, uh, we design according to the space planning or the uh, typology of it. But there are some uh, standard operating procedure that one can adopt in order to make a build, uh, building group. So how it can be adopted is by having the four pillars or the four indicators of green building taken into consideration like energy concerns, conservation of water, management of waste and construction material in all the stages starting from the design to the construction work, maintenance and at also at the demolition uh, stage. 
so energy concerns uh, can be taken uh, we can take an intelligent approach towards energy and conserving water at a very beginning of our designing stage just by orienting the structure in a proper manner where the energy requirements can be reduced or making a facade more sustainable in a way uh, where direct uh, heat gain is lesser as and the indoor temperature can be uh, for a better com uh, comfort level can be achieved similar goes with our conservation of water and the management of waste at construction material also construction level also and by and large selecting material which are more sustainable and which can reduce the usage uh, at uh, the at the planning stage or the construction stage so all in all promoting well being and health and also create, uh, creating some resilient spaces protecting communities and people so uh, all together it is not just about the building but also uh, with the fact that a place making principle can be built up and uh, looking at a healthier uh, neighborhood as well so coming to this as uh, green buildings are gaining traction multiple frameworks have been uh, framework have been formed which are the, which are also known as the rating systems right many of you must have heard about the rating systems which are applicable in india and these uh, these are devised to encourage or promote and promote the sustainable design and when we talk about measuring uh, the green building or its efficiency these help as a tools to measure uh, the efficiency of a green building. so these three are prominent green building rating system which you can see on the screen first one being the leadership in energy and uh, environment design that is the lead which was developed by usgbc in the year 1998 uh, second is the indian green buildings council igbc which is in turn uh, very well connected to the usgbc lead and has taken up the supportive documentation for, from the lead itself so uh, both of these uh, these constitute the certification level and where the certification has been provided at different levels starting from uh, certified silver to the platinum rated building according to the points earned by a uh, green building by uh, measuring the and having a proper evidence of it and both of these uh, rating systems have distinguished the typologies of building from industrial whether it would be a uh, residential building or a commercial building the manuals are set forth for uh, all kind of buildings like right? it is not just that residential only a one common manual has been set to deal with uh, all the uh, factors and indicators but uh, they have a different uh, range of uh, rating system for different technologies and similar is with the greha which is uh, called as green rating for integrated architect and assessment which was set in 2007 and it is one of the national uh, nationally recognized in india uh, as a green building rating system and this deals with uh, the performance and evaluate uh, and give the certification based on the metrics so in this they give uh, one star to five star instead of giving the certification as gold or silver or platinum they believe in a star rating and they also have variant uh, seven variant types of building to fulfill all the building criteria so looking forward uh, to it these rating system aims to quantify the environment economic and social and socio economic benefits of a green so when we uh, think about how this building how a green building is going to perform and how we are going to measure its uh, credibility there are point by section uh, which are laid for each and every uh, typology of building where energy water and comfort are the criteria along with social uh, social indicator or uh, indoor, uh, indoor environment quality and waste management strategy so different uh, rating system have occupied this uh, criteria and distributed it accordingly so the rating system all together in india are very well aligned with the national and local bylaws and thus they encourage rather than penalizing uh, any of the buildings and they are also applicable for all the climatic zone thus they are pandemic zone 
there are many other energy uh, rating system like B and CBC which also provide a supporting tool for calculating and measuring the energy part of the building. But these three are very widely used. Uh, then coming up to the weightage of a green building parameter. So when we uh, correlate lead RGBC and green or uh, when we distinguish all of these three, it has been seen that the most important indicator is the energy efficiency, which almost take 30% of the criteria in each of the rating system. So it is very well defined uh, as per the rating system. And the second most efficiency is the building material and the water, which takes up the main criteria. So these are the basic uh, sustainable indicators and the key performance indicators which we have discussed before also. So these three are common in uh, all the rating system. Apart from this, because LEED is uh, globally appointed, it also uh, looks at the location and trans uh, transportation, whereas IGBC uh, prefers to look at the site selection and planning, how the neighborhood is going to impact by, the, by certain buildings and how the performance of the building is going to cater to a particular site. So it uh, it has given a uh, maximum of 14 points to this criteria. And one of the prominent thing which Griha has introduced is social economic strategies, which is almost 6%. So in these kind of strategies, also the living condition of the construction workers, universal access is provided or not, safety uh, measures for the workers, have been included. So this is a, a, a new category which Griha has introduced and it's been uh, taken care of. So for uh, integrative analysis, the levels in various uh, uh, rating systems are merged into common performance levels from outstanding excellent uh, mark performance on co uh, company. So all these uh, performance levels are like uh, how the certification has been presented or is been uh, given for all the three rating systems. Uh, uh, platinum being the highest and Griha Fire rating uh, uh, being the highest, which constitute to the outstanding performance. And then later on, uh, uh, excellent mark and competent as per the gold, silver, and just a certified building. So these all uh, performance levels are then actually categorized into the points which are being gained by a certain building by according to its performance. So when the points criteria meet a certain level, which has been displayed on the right side ta uh, table form, then the certification are being uh, uh, given according to the points which are being gained by, the, by uh, measuring those performance of the building. So lower level or uh, maximum targets uh, have been uh, have been targeted to get the excellent performance that is also very well linked to the incentives provided by the government. So when we think about uh, when we look at the process, it is mostly similar to all the rating system which takes almost sixty to ninety days to complete wherein uh, you have to go online and register uh, on any of the portal, submit the preliminary documentation, and that documentation will be assessed by the IGBC or whichever uh, rating system uh, it has been uploaded on. Then there will be a final uh, documentation budget projecting. Then there will be a site visit. So all this will be in a, uh, in a window of 60 days will be happening, and a final review will be given on that project. So when, the, uh, when we are not very well satisfied with the rating which we are getting, we can again approach to the documentation process, which can uh, we can again appeal to the IGBC or any uh, consult uh, rating system, and we can again develop that certification uh, process all over. So when this certification uh, comes in, the cost also is quite, uh, uh, take, uh, it takes our center stage. But if we see the pyramid over here, we can see the registration fees or the documentation process have a negligible fees, which would depend upon the again the typology of building and uh, the area of the building which uh, we are constructing. But then the added uh, part of it would be uh, added part would be the lead uh, 
if any design uh, effort has been taken so energy modeling is been done or any conditioning has been given or outsources outsourced for any of the consultant those part bearing the measuring of the energy efficiency criteria has been done that will take a, a little bit of costing but by and large construction cost would remain the same and it would all depend upon the budget and the design choices so costing also doesn't uh, affect as much as the benefits of a green building uh, we can take up. So now let us see one of the examples uh, of an IGPC rated building. This was a life project uh, done at Kalyan in Mumbai. Uh, wherein this was a building center design uh, and the land use was for art gallery and commercial premises. So one of the first uh, uh, criteria which uh, IGBC looks at is the site development and site selection under which uh, the first criteria are there are some prerequisite uh, requisite criteria which are mentioned which are mandatory to look into which we have to uh, uh, we have to consider and abide by the rules so for one of it was the existing vegetation uh, if you can see the plot over here the existing vegetation trees are surrounded on the west side of the plot and the plot is very well connected with three sides of the road. So it was taken into consideration that all the existing trees on the sites were preserved. And the second most criteria was the infrastructure amenities within a walking distance of four, one kilometer. So mainly this criteria is, uh, is taken into consideration wherein uh, resources are uh, utilized properly and there is no wasting of resources which are readily available around the site. So documentation of these uh, criteria has to be done and documentation of the infrastructure uh, within the one kilometer of the radius was done accordingly to fulfill that criteria. Then coming up to the concept and form development. Firstly, uh, we had to uh, break the ideology of an office building, how it, is, how it should look. So uh, considering uh, the massing of the building, uh, as the location was such that it was surrounded by a low rise uh, with a good density of residential building. So the uh, massing was taken into consideration wherein the building mass was rest on the ground and it was seen that it should uh, stand tall to attain the frontage and allow the uh, people passing by to have a glance at, um, at its appearance. Also, a base uh, was given to accommodate all the recreational activities. So, setting up the workspaces and the recreational activities uh, at a different level. So, that transition of space would be at a better level. But then again, one criteria or one thing which we uh, tried to encourage was uh, providing public spaces where uh, it could act as a holding spaces or an interaction. So to cater to that scenario, we try to elevate that base and a proper interaction and transition pay, uh, space was uh, provided below at the ground level with a double height. Uh, with a double height. So in this way, a floor-wise distribution was done, mainly keeping in mind the uh, climate responsive spaces which we wanted to design. Uh, for providing a better indoor environment quality for the occupants. So for that matter, uh, the main part which we uh, uh, consider was doing a climate analysis. This was done on the software of Ecotech, which you can see over here. Uh, mainly the uh, massing of the and the form which was developed was studied for its uh, solar uh, radiation. So it was found that the south facade is gaining uh, more solar radiation than the east and the west one and also it was seen that uh, how uh, shadow analysis was taken into consideration so that it couldn't harm the existing uh, structures or the existing neighborhood quality of uh, sun and shade and also taken into consideration, uh, consideration the shading of the uh, building on its own surroundings on, on the plot itself so these were utilized as a tools and then it was uh, uh, the further design was taken into consideration wherein vegetative buffer space was provided all around the building. 
So when you see this section, you can see uh, uh, this details wherein uh, vegetative buffer space was provided, which could enhance the indoor environment quality. It could reduce the temperature difference from inside to outside, wherein the solar uh, radiation uh, was taken into consideration. And all those parameters were applied uh, in the designing stage itself. And then to prove this part and to measure it, how we can do it, we can see uh, that in the later slide, slide. But again, at the construction level, also many measures were taken uh, wherein uh, we can prevent environment harm. So, at the construction level, instead of having uh, normal GI sheets, which uh, reduces the aesthetics or, or of the surrounding cityscape. We tried to develop a temporary uh, living wall, which is which was all around the plot, which was used uh, to prevent uh, the dust, which can happen in the construction stage to get outside, and which can uh, create a lesser pollution, so that a social benefit uh, could be achieved for the people who are living nearby or who are walking on the uh, uh, utilizing this uh, roads. Also, uh, this uh, living wall uh, benefited uh, to the workers who are going to work inside the premises. Uh, humidifying uh, the site was also one of the concerns wherein dust pollution could affect the living condition of the construction workers. So, Erica farms and uh, different kind of native trees which can, uh, which can uh, apply which can increase the uh, humidification was above landscape, water conservation and stormwater drainage measures were taken into consideration. And one of the main criteria of IGBC or, or any of the rating system is sedimentation control measure, wherein the topsoil uh, which was removed has been kept at a different level covered with a appropriate fabric to minimize the loss of the sedimentation and also different materials which are used in the construction were properly maintained and properly covered so that the erosion, erosion uh, doesn't happen by diversions of drains. Uh, and also measures were taken for const uh, construction, uh, constructing proper zone of vehicular access. So it does not harm the other site, which is untouched. Then moving ahead to the design strategies. These are some of the energy conservation measures which were applied uh, to check whether the daylight factor and energy conserve, uh, conservation measures are at place. So one of the prominent uh, part was uh, when we had decided to give that vegetative, uh, vegetative buffer all over the site, it was seen that uh, maybe it could affect the activities which are happening inside, mainly the daylighting factor, uh, which could uh, cause hindrance in the input, uh, indoor environment quality mainly on the west and the east facade. So for that, what we tried to do is we tried to uh, analyze the gla uh, glass which we are using on the facade uh, by applying variable glass transmittance levels and designing the facade in a way wherein three types of uh, one, was, uh, one was a 90% transmittance and the other two options which were created which had different uh, range of transmittance so that we can achieve a proper daylighting and illuminance level in the indoor activity. So uh, by and large, with the third um, option, we got a proper lux levels and the illuminance level which were uh, required at a particular working rate or a particular activity for the workspace. So other part uh, like cooling and dehumidification uh, de to reduce the energy efficiency or to reduce the energy consumption, even this uh, vegetative buffer and glass help us to reduce the energy system. So by and large, uh, with this category, we could achieve 10 points uh, in the IGBC uh, certification. The next strategy was of the vegetative buffer. Uh, as I said that uh, on the east and west side of the facade, uh, it was required to uh, manage the angle of uh, the sun, which is always at a low angle so that it doesn't cause this blend. So vegetative buffer were provided, but again, according to the activities of each flow, the buffers had, had been, uh, by understanding the function of the different vegetative buffers, we had provided two uh, modules to it. One module wherein uh, there were less denser 
factories where in social interactive space was also been managed and one model where uh, denser trees along with uh, lesser uh, space uh, was been designed so according to the facade development according to the activities which are going to take place these models were uh, uh, were designed and similarly there were advantages uh, which were seen of the vegetative buffer also which uh, again provided a good health and wealth being also which reduce uh, reduce the obstacle pollution the uh, noise pollution and it ca uh, captured the small dust particles around the site and uh, provided a better comfort level in the indoors again one of the main criteria of the credits which were achieved was by native plants so using a vegetative buffer along with the native plants which uh, uh, reduces the less maintenance and less uh, water use uh, drought tolerant uh, species were uh, were introduced in this buffer so that uh, we can achieve some credit points accordingly so in all in an all five points were achieved uh, uh, with this ecm that is the energy conservation metric then not uh, last but not the least uh, there is one criteria of materials using of sustainable building materials and some innovation in design and techniques which is there in igs so it uh, it emphasizes that uh, almost materials whatever we are using should be uh, regionally sourced so the embodied energy of the materials or the life cycle of materials is taken into consideration and almost 80% of the materials uh, were uh, sourced regionally so the points uh, accordingly were taken into consideration and for the innovation and in design we uh, tried to include a living wall or a bio wall which was an inactive wall in the indoor space where a double height uh, features were there to control the indoor environment quality to provide a better oxygen level and to reduce the co2 consumption uh, in that particular area the hydrophilic facade was uh, designed on the recreational area which was uh, generating energy which was a uh, self cooling and it also uh, produce uh, distilled water so these were some innovation in design which were applied there were many other ecm uh, regarding the uh, waste management where uh, mbr was applied uh, regarding the water management or calculating the lux level calculating the rain water harvesting potential i haven't put up uh, all of that because it is all calculated based but then these of uh, these are some ecms e wherein the students can also try to analyze and take up some supportive uh, evidence from this and can design their buildings in a way so all in all 20% uh, 15 to 20% energy was reduced 40% of waste was uh, reduced and we tried to reduce the water less of water portable capacity by 50 to 60% so uh, with this uh, i can lead you to the green building careers which has a potential and can offer uh, you as a student and as a professional for a designation and help you to stand out uh, in the building industry so as an architect we all design for the present uh, with the awareness of the past and uh, for the future which is essentially on so this quote by norman foster uh, which holds true in the current times right now with ongoing climate change and crisis which we are facing so sustainable architecture is a current necessity and fortunately it is trending awareness is beneficial for the environment and with the current covid scenario and the existing crisis which we are facing and we are looking at a v or a u shape uh, economic growth uh, curve which could help uh, india to build a, a sustain a sustainable in Uh, industry and also the agencies like uh, igbc bhb and usgbc they are already trying to uh, try to build in this green building resource and also they are working at the college level to catch professional uh, young uh, students also and to make them industry ready so we all you all can uh, get into touch with all the rating systems and can uh, be a part of it by uh, even the igbc is pro, uh, providing some student membership via is providing student membership you all can become a part of it and can learn 
about uh, the current trends uh, in green building, the events that are taking place uh, uh, by the industry heads. And of course, the upgraded professional, which has been seen here, is one of the primary most important person or uh, we can say a practitioner who is uh, we can practice in green building uh, building sector. So at a student level, you can uh, at uh, at a student level you can just uh, collect the information and knowledge based on this. And after being graduated, you can uh, uh, after achieving some professional experience in the industry, you can appear for the upgraded professional uh, that is the AP uh, being an AP and apply the skills to um, for the green building sectors also. And these are some websites uh, which are at most important, which can help uh, everyone to be in touch with the green building practices and green building uh, trends in India and across the world. Also, the uh, USGBC, India, uh, IGBC, Greenha, World Green Building Council are, are topmost website which you can look into. The Net Zero um, Energy Building is uh, one of the sites which I would like to tell the students to go uh, go ahead and check this website. This will help you to learn about uh, fundamentals of green buildings, what are the primary factors or how you can treat a green building. Some uh, technical data are being there in this website, the latest technology. Policy making at every stage, right from the global to the state levels, have been mentioned. There are webinars which are free of cost for uh, all the professionals who can uh, just be a part of it. And there are ideas, and there is everything in, uh, related to green building on this website. I would have uh, liked to serve this website, but I think uh, we are uh, up with the time right now. So I won't be surfing on the site, but I would suggest you to go after this webinar and look at to look at all this and lastly let us help us uh, help everyone and help together shape the future of green building by considering ecology infrastructure and indoor environment quality without impacting much of the environment so this uh, with this i end my presentation thank you everyone i believe it was a webinar which would be beneficial for the students who are present here thank you thank you very much ma'am i know this session will benefit benefit us in many ways and uh, i hope that we uh, get the same opportunity again in future to have you with us ma'am so now we will move to the next uh, question and answer round uh, some of us uh, some of us had asked some questions uh, okay. during the webinar which is in our uh, chat box ma'am uh, so if it's visible ma'am uh, you can see the questions ma'am yeah. Okay, what are the economic benefits of a green building or a sustainable building and development? So I think so we have covered this point wherein uh, we talked about the different kind of stakeholders which are involved at different construction uh, sectors, right? From the developer to the uh, person who is going to buy a flat in a green building. So economic benefit in terms of developer, if we think, uh, then the building is market ready or the marketing strategies uh, which are there uh, can be effectively useful for him. Also the incentives, um, intensive give, uh, incentives given by the government in terms of FSI reduction or any other PMA Yojana, if, uh, PMAY Yojana if we are looking at. Uh, affordable housing is taking place. So builders and developers are going to gain economic benefits uh, because of that. And also the tenants in terms of health and well-being, the depreciation cost of the house is going to reduce. And also it would increase the life cycle of the building. And by and large, it would be savings on bills if we want to directly connect it with the energy concerns. Uh, by and large, it will be saving the bills. Okay, what is the most effective way to enhance people awareness towards energy consumption in a building? So at a neighborhood level or at our 
own level at, when we are home just switching off the fans or switching off the light when not in use these are the four most simple steps which, uh, which we can take and save the energy as a designer we have a lot to see uh, to right from the designing stage to the occupancy stage but when we think of, uh, about the awareness at the society level also if we are making a policies or we are making commitments towards saving uh, energy it would be really helpful so at uh, com uh, when there are complexes or uh, at the office levels also if the higher authorities are maintaining some systems and policies uh which can um which can increase awareness of the occupants who, who are residing in it that would be really helpful uh for building that awareness thank you thank you ma'am so there is a really interesting question ma'am uh, from prangam vasistha uh, sir he is an uh, assistant professor for policy ma'am so he has asked with rapid urbanization in india there is a rapid need of construction of affordable housing how affordable housing sector can incorporate the techniques of green building thus returning to vernacular architecture can be a solution yeah so i expect you can see it now yeah. okay i am not able to see it maybe it is yeah i can see uh, so uh, if we talk about india itself india is not uh, new to green building as such and sustainability is not achieved through uh, directly but it has a parallel efforts all together if so that's it uh, that is my personal opinion but then because of the rapid urbanization people are migrating to the cities and uh, houses are increasing but then if we talk about vernacular architecture yes it can be regarded as one of the solution so uh, if you all remember the slide wherein i asked you about which one is more greener if you see the first uh, image that is the a zimbabwe building so that was built in the 90s and it was uh, built uh, the concept was of biomimicry of the termite map so similarly in india if we consider vernacular architecture like passive design strategies and considering the climate uh, aspects of each and every climatic zone we have different kind of climates and for each of them passive design uh, strategies have been uh, have been modified and these strategies of vernacular architecture can be taken to the modern and contemporary uh, contemporary uh, way and we can build affordable housing accordingly for a, a basic example like in warm and humid climate we require cross ventilation and more air changes uh, we uh, have to reduce the humidity uh, for that matter so we have similar structures like wada style of architecture in vernacular architecture or, or in uh, maybe if we could see hot and dry climate in rajasthan we require lesser of uh, heat gain so the thickness of the wall is uh, more in a vernacular architect so simple uh, strategies of orientation to the use of materials to the use of design uh, conservation uh, how we can try to maximize the uh, utility of that space it can be achieved through vernacular architecture also so thank you so much ma'am so i think uh, it had cleared our uh, doubts ma'am so uh, now i would like to request architect namrata talukda ma'am assistant professor in guwahati college of architecture to deliver the vote of thanks so please architect uh, namrata ma'am thank you rahul sir for giving me the opportunity to offer the vote of thanks in today's webinar i am namrata talukdar on behalf of guwahati college of architecture and planning would like to express my gratitude to architect tanvi savant for such a nice and informative presentation it will definitely help our students and faculties to understand the topic in a better perspective i extend my gratitude to our managing trustee architect abani das sir and daksha das ma'am ceo architect sahil das sir for giving us the opportunity to organize such insightful webinar events i would also like to thank our principal architect digambar das sir principal dia dr nirmala devi ma'am registrar dr y majumdar sir for their encouragement 
to make this webinar a great success. I must thank uh, I must thank the organizing team, coordinator architect Parangam Sharma Bhakista, today's host architect Rahul Roy, architect Ankurdeep Chetia, architect Ankur Jati Dutta, and all the faculties and staff for hard working for uh, past days for the webinar. Last but not the least, I would like to thank architect Biswadatta sir, JP Fukan sir, and all other participants who has participated in today's webinar. At the end, I again thank today's speaker, architect Savant, for giving GCAP time from her busy schedule and also hope her association in our future events. Thank you. Thank you so much, all. Over thank to you, you Rahul. So with the final word of thanks, we'll be ending this webinar of GCF Insight and hope to meet you all again on another session. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care.